and all you wonderful lovelies out there to that. Tis I, Girl the Sun, aka Lynn, and allow me to welcome you back to another installment of Monster Bomb. Today's the day you've waited for, my lovelies. Today we start going after the ladies. And I think no better choice for the first one is Polly, our lovely poltergeist. So let's step on in there, shall we? That we shall play as our little our little willow wisp here. Yeah, he definitely not that. Go by the name of Yep. S sure thing. He's a shy guy. Let's see, Polly likes fun and I think creativity. Alley showed. Uh, that's bold. No, that's bold. Okay. Um, I think this is it. That's fun. Yeah, that works. Radioactive possum bites you. That's science. That's creative. Combination of emojis. I'm not entirely sure, so I'm gonna go with this one. What's the sexiest type of knowledge I'll ever can have? It's Damien. I'll make a killer cocktail out of anything. That sounds like maybe her. I don't know. Curious force things. Yep, it's Polly. Polly, doing so good. All right. So we got set up for Paul. Paul. All right. Probably just keep going from there. Alright, so let's go have some fun. Today, 300 people on the rave. Too fun. There's a day you're on shopping with Vera and Polly when a wild cockatrice appears. It gallops through the mall, biting shoppers with its jagged beak and turning them to stone. Scott and Damien come chasing after it, holding a butterfly net and fr a frilly dress. This is not our fault! Huh? We had nothing to do with this! <sighs> Another mythical creature crisis, just when I'm starting to enjoy my shopping. Aw, but it's so cute! I bet that vicious chicken dragon really does have a party. Scott and Damien see everyone looking at them and wisely hide inside a clothing rack. What are you going to do about this creature? Nort? Delicious cinnamon bun. Uh, even if this is creative, I think it's good enough. Oh, it's charming! Why is it charming? You unwrap the delicious cinnamon bun treat you were saving for later and present it to the cockatrice. He sniffs it once, and its eyes go wide with rage. You tried and failed. <laughs> you idiot! Everyone has cockatrices are allergic to gluten. But it's too late. It bites you and turns you to stone. Your friends find a wizard to turn you back again later, of course, but the rumors go around that you missed class because you got stoned, so you get detention. Hey. Alright, maybe I guess I should add some more to the charm. Alright! Wolfpack. It's either Wolfpack or the shop. Yeah, let's see them. Fuck yourself up looking big and tough sporty as possible and take it on the Wolfpack. Hey, you- oh. Hi, kitty. What's up? You decided to come in and join me in recording? That is very nice of you. Bit the key. Hey, you! You know what it means, ain't you ever seen with the wolf pack's table? Well, it probably means you don't hear much. Ah, oh, shit, yeah, I should've joined Polly. Crap! Means you're one of us! One, one of us! us! One, one of us! us! Don't get us wrong, the second lunch is over, we 100% go back to hating you because you're weak and not on our level, brah. But for now, you might as well enjoy living your best werewolf life to the max. Okay, okay. Ah, sometimes we stick on. We like to stick to the classic, like the hating other monsters, but other days we like to be aggressively inclusive. And you caught us on an aggressively inclusive day. Yeah, brah! What classic werewolf activity would you like to do? Correcting the spelling, blah blah blah. Yeah, we know. 
Howling at the Moon is charming. So I'm gonna go with that. We love Howling at the Moon! Flirting with the Moon is even better! Let's go outside and flirt with the Moon right now! Yet outside where the Moon is visible in broad daylight is because why the fuck not? It, it does that normally! Narrator, have you ever looked outside? You kick things off telling the Moon that you're sorry to, for bothering her, but you just wanted to say how much you appreciate the way she controls the tide so gracefully. Wolfpack steps up and continues the charming yet respectful tone you said. Hey Moon! Is there a mirror in your pocket? Because I can see myself in your pants! Never mind. Hey Moon! Are you an astronaut? Because your ass is out of this world and I can see myself in that too! Actually, are you an astronaut with a mirror in your spacesuit? Suddenly a piece of paper wolfs down from the sky. It appears to be a letter and it reads... Dear Lynn, thank you for respecting my boundaries and not using crude opening line before we even got to know each other. I'm very flattered and appreciative. Thank you again, the moon. Huh? <sighs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's a good idea to be respectful to women and treat them as people, even sometimes they're a moon and not people. Yeah, being respectful to wisdom is the best. Let's get some pussy by being considerate and respectful to women. <sighs> the shit I read. And they're off, and Mir and Polly are deep conversation. Letter from the moon, classic, can't believe they fell for it. The only thing better than a good prank is someone else's expense in a prank. That teaches a valuable lesson. And I gained four charm. Now I gotta keep my ass on Polly. Alright! And uh, she would be... Maybe at the gym. I get an extra bit of charm. Later that night, you're out. Hop bar hopping to hit some monsters and you know, the even Polly. The evening comes to a grinding halt when you're denied admission to the club club, thus named for the giant club carried by the bouncer, who is currently denying you entry. How unsatisfactory. My modus operandi is in the instigator of excellency, explicitly, not the victim of it. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> hey there, handsome. Interested in some hot ghoul on ghoul action? The bouncer snorts. I can see right through you, Casparina. Move along. <laughs> Ugh, who does that douchebag think he is, keeping us out of the club like it's his job or something? Both Polly and Liam look at you expectantly. Now it's your chance to save the night. Even though Liam didn't do anything, at least Polly offered to bang him. Is that a revolution? Let's see, start a better party. Yeah. You take off your shirt, begin swinging it above your head, making siren noises like a sexy ambulance. Immediately, the crowd's attention is captivated because of reasons. You dance the dance of the uninhibited You dance the dance of the uninhibited, moving with the grace and elegance of a coked up giraffe. I've seen that on Family Guy. The crowd follows her lead. Ghosts and ghouls alike slip out of their sh skirts and skinny jeans. Mummies unravel their bandages. When the people inside the club see that they're what they're missing, they flood to join your naked rave. In the morning. Over an epic hangover breakfast, you reminisce about last night's triumph. <coughs> what, a su what a surprising, pleasant turn of events, and a rare opportunity to work on my moon tag. I think my favorite part was when we literally fucked the police. Best night ever. Yeah, it was. And you sure showed everyone the hey, don't, don't play with that, don't play with that. No. You'd, you'd get your ass kicked if you just destroyed this kitty. Cord. Definitely get her free butt kick if she destroyed it. Random cat is random. Apparently going to be very prominent in this report. I do right, Kitty. Showed everyone the power of self-confidence and team spirit, giving no fucks. Yay! Ooh, bolt's up there now. Let's All right. go!
cat. He do fun. You notice know, Polly and Scott on the lawn doing something. Polly is chewing determinedly on a hula hoop while Scott slowly covers himself in sunglasses. Despite your better judgment, you ask what they're doing. Bro. Yoga bro, what does it look like? Liam said we should practice some yoga in order to cleanse our bodies of all the drugs and sports. And I was like, sure, I'll try it if they want. So here we are, doing yoga. It seems like a lot of work to look up yoga on the internet, so instead we just made an educated guess on, based on uh, nothing really. Actually nothing. Oh man, what if we're doing it wrong? Yeah, like, do you know anything about yoga? Do you have, like, any tips on how to do, like, the best? Yoga pants. Yoga pants? Those are pants that do yoga? Or pants made out of yoga? Puzzling question. Neither silly man. I can't believe I didn't think of yoga pants before. He means yoga pants, as in yielding organic gun armor pants. They're what battle merch wear when they want to uh, breathe down there. Oh, that makes so much sense. Of course you would want your gun armor to be breathable and organic if there's going to do yoga. Holly just happens to have a pair of yoga pants in her locker. She has got to lay waste to the, co the countryside and gets super limber in the process. Aw oh, man, it didn't tell me if I gained a heart or not. How am I am I supposed to know right. swayed, swayed the wild paw paw? <laughs> Listen, Lynn, you can totally sit with us. I just hope you don't bring a gun to a bazooka fight. <laughs> yeah, we're showing off our best flasks. So not the best flask exactly, but the best contents. Good god. Are literal, actual flasks of alcohol openly allowed in the school cafeteria? Are there no rules? Apparently not, because Polly starts setting a series of flasks down on the table. Okay, this one is beer, my WC wine, whiskey, ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, at ethyl alcohol, the soul of an infant. Ha, <laughs> weak. This is radioactive. As absinthe. This is fire. This is literal poor life choices. Okay, but this one has another smaller flask inside. It is the ultimate flask. They could probably go like this for goddamn ever. Maybe you can cut in with the craziest thing of all. Think carefully about who you want to impress with your flask contents. You're ready for the most hardcore badass thing ever. The flask contains an HMG that grants you three wishes, but I'm totally drinking it because I don't give a fuck and grant my own damn wishes. Wanna do a dope party? Yep. Ultra whiskey. Heck yeah! Heck heck yeah yeah! Let's rage! I've always wanted to make ultra whiskey, but I could not get my whiskey bottles to fuck. I've tried everything. Mood lighting, sultry music, chainsaws, you know, all the cliche romantic stuff. But it seems not impossible to get them to make sweet whiskey love. I almost heard to think inanimate objects couldn't have sex. But I've had tons of sex with inanimate objects, so that's just silly. If you can make whiskey on whiskey turn into ultra whiskey, we should definitely apply the principle all over the damn place. Two cars to make a limousine, an orgy of iPhones to make an iPhone triple X, the most advanced update possible, duh. and a microwave, and a Russian novel to get a pair of designer shoes. I don't know how that works, but okay. Can't wait to create dope stuff, and then the world can, can't can even handle, probably. Well, the world probably doesn't need to worry about handling it, because there's no way you can pull that insanity off. But yay's for the plans with Polly. And that seemed a little hard, damn it. Alright! Damien apparently gave no fucks about what I did. Afterwards, and she's about to show you her latest dumb tattoo when suddenly. Greetings, my love. Never fear, my lady. I will save you from this last 
Ah, word. Damn it. Laxivus Cretan. I don't know what I fucking said. Uh, is the interdimensional prince, and he's apparently here to block your metaphorical cock. Yay! Gender differences are hilarious. <sighs> Whoa, you're all sparkly. Are those tearaway pants? Sadly, they are not my queen. My fashion sense does not operate on the same ethereal plane as your own. Well, I'm presently on fleek. I die on fleek. And so I'm cursed to roam the earth forever, eternally on fleek. That, that's so dumb saying. It's the exact on fleekness which I seek. For you see, madam, I am indeed a fashionista such as yourself to the plane of ocean. To plan the ultimate wedding. Hours. Oh. Hours? This could be bad. You know, Polly's not above, not above getting married as a one-off joke. You've got to stop this madness. Oh, party so dope. Polly doesn't want to travel to another dimension. Party with sex lasers. Marry to yourself right now. This sounds like a bold thing. So I'm gonna go with sex lasers. You steal the sex lasers from your school's highly controversial physics lab, and yet the party started. Great soul blends of Galaxol. I know I said that wrong again. I did not know you had such sick parties in this dimension. It's Polly time! Yeah, boy, the school is nationally ranked in the field of particle physics. I don't know what kind of snooty soirees you got over there in the snooze dimension. But here at Spooky High School, we have sex with coherent light. I am truly humbled by this, the haughtiness of your party. I shall return to my dimension and lament that the fact that I this is that it's a total party wasteland. Shit. I'm so depressed about this, I'm screwing up my own lines. You don't even notice the prince leaving because we're too busy humping a laser. Gain two boldness and one fun. Laser humping, bro. Laser humping. It's apparently a thing. All right. I'm gonna break up that creativity. Uh, da -da -da. Mustache. Sick mustache, bro. I want to know what the little dude is that just keeps following my character on my body. In the middle of everything, a portal opens up, swallows Vera, Polly, and Liam. We dive in to rescue them. Straight into. Guess what? I finished my things! The final season of the Interdimensional Bachelor! <sighs> Good lord. Uh. Help, I'm in danger of spraining my eyes from rolling them so hard. Yes! Oh my god, we're on a game show! Yes, indeed. Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial, I mean, trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my. Oh my god, I'm gonna win. I don't even care what the prize is! Your what? Your wife? What a revolting prince. So you're saying we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios, or answers to which will make us more or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you? That's extremely problematic. I can't think of anyone who would ever want to play such a tardy dating game. <coughs> Everybody stop raising a reasonable concern, reasonable concern so I can hear the first question! That's the spirit. Question one. Describe your ideal marriage proposal. But before Polly can answer, you lost in yourself. Now is your chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince packing. Is any with the grandmother's wedding ring still attached to my grandmother's wedding ring? John Hinging bees pouring out. Sounds hilarious. Ah, it was a bold move. I thought it was creative. You and injure John, unleash the bees. Wait, why are there bees inside your mouth? You fool! Your childish prank has destabilized the fabric of this pocket dimension. It's coming apart around us! Ah, oh, help! My shoes are turning into lizards! I like those shoes! What's this? All my money in my wallet is turning into moss? You'll pay for this! No part of me is turning into animals, but I suddenly care about things. This is all your fault. Why didn't you just answer with words? Why did it have to be bees? 
but you can't take back the past. You spend the next thousand years traversing various horrifying dimensions with Prince and your three pissed off friends. No time has passed when you return home, but you'll never forget. William and Polly and Vera will never forgive. Yeah. I didn't think it was bold. I thought the first one was bold. Alright! Scott and Polly are sitting together laughing our better for more glasses off. Do Damien! Do Damien! <laughs> Grr, I'm Damien! I look at my stupid red face! I use violence to cover up the fact that I've been brought up to be re uh, revered a toxic version of masculinity which has alienated me from my own true emotions. Haha, <laughs> that sounds exactly like him. Okay, okay, you do Vera. I'm Vera. Very smart, my hair is pretty, and all my friends look up to me because I'm a strong, independent woman. Scott, I'm not sure you understand how a person depression work. I'm not Scott. Vera, you can tell because I said my name just now. Okay, what about you? Not any good impression? This one. Feel dizzy. Alright, one makes Polly mad, one makes Polly happy. I know you're doing an impression to me because you said my name, but... Oh my god, that sounds exactly like him! It does? Yeah, remember that time you took that impersonation... We took the impersonation class together, and we had to introduce ourselves? Oh yeah! I guess I did say woof woof it's me, Scott, a dog boy who was bad at impression. But I didn't yell it like that! I'm sorry, are you the real Scott? There's two absolute identical werewolves in front of me, and I can't tell the difference. Molly insists on smooching on a smooching contest to determine who the real Scott is. You end up winning in more ways than one. Halfway through the week. Alright! I didn't fuck up. Uh let's see. Boldness is at nine, charms at nine. Charm it up! Damn, that was a hard creativity. Why does doing these voices make my nose congested? I have no idea. You're getting ready for another round of You Guessed a Dodgeball when Polly flags you down. <sighs> hey you, you know what I realize? Jim is the one time we're actually encouraged to judge the way students handle each other's balls. Before you can even begin to think of a response, a giant interdimensional rip opens in the gymnasium. God damn it! Ah, Pops, the ever-persistent interdimensional prince. I'm starting to think he is getting close to his own update. If he's going to be this persistent. Greetings, my love. My dearest Lady Paulina. Worry not, my love. I'm here to whisk you away to the safest safety of my own dimension. Safety? From what? From what? Why, from this unceasing war you seem to always be caught in the middle of. Danger surrounds all of you. Look at these un-uniform soldiers. Look at these projectiles hurting, hurtling through the air, often towards your gorgeous visage. Come, let me steal you away. If you're using the word steal, it's a good sign this is not going to be a great decision. I mean, going in the right direction. I don't know. But the interdimensional is too focused on saving Polly from the horrors of war to listen to the reason. Grabs her by the arm and is about to pull her through the interdimensional rift when you call out to him. If you're taking her, you must follow the rules of engagement and first speak to our highest ranking officer. True hero wouldn't flee to safety. He would stay and fight this war for his love's honor. You see, either creative, charm, or bold. I'm gonna go with charm. Ah, it was a bold stat. I survived. Ah. You make a very excellent point, my friend. Fear not, Paulina. I will fight for your honor, defeat your enemies, and then abduct you back to my dimension. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, fuck. Oh, perfect. Sounds great. All right, Pauline's army. It's time to defeat her attackers. Oh, Paulina! The prince rushes the opposing team with gusto, ready to destroy the dastardly beings determined to hurt his uninterested bride. Unfortunately for him, Polly used her psychic powers. What? You didn't know ghosts have psychic powers? And gave her team new instructions. Or wait, she just texts them. 
Both the dodgeball teams immediately pelt him with all the balls they have, which is a lot of balls, and the interdimensional prince is accosted from every side. No! Pauline, why? The betrayal! It hurts! And so do these balls! With a final ball to the head, ironically thrown from his beloved Polly herself, the interdimensional prince is knocked unconscious. A rift in space and time opens, and a pair of concerned looking servants carry the prince back through the rift, which then closes behind them. Sweet. This is the most fun I've ever had playing dodgeball. We should knock people unconscious in PE every day, Lynn. Man, if that doesn't sound romantic, what does? I gained, I gained a negative interdimensional point. That's a new one. All right. Yay for new things. I know. Fun. Then we're gonna have a, a disproportional thing of stats. That'll be easier to handle. Increases, another rib. This is one that's my lucky no cut. Gain to fun. Essay. Later, you see Polly. Even more. He's even more excited than usual, and you decide to see what's going on. Maybe cocaine. Or meth. Or PCP. You know, I've been doing a lot of soul searching recently, get it, and I think I finally figured it out. Who, who I really am, I mean, my spirit emoji. I think a lot of people would say I'm, like, the winking ghost emoji, or the flag of Ecuador emoji, but those are just who I am on the outside, you know? My real spirit emoji is pink heart with a blue arrow through it. It's like... I'm sweet, right? But I'm also got a dark side. Plus, an arrow through the heart is how I was killed. Or at least, that's one of the many ways I'm gonna say I died, but you'll never truly know. I just noticed, is her necklace, like, a Dorito cover, like, dipped in salsa? That's what it looks like to me. I could be totally wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. What about you? What's your spirit emoji? It's pink heart with ribbon around it right next to yours in the selection menu. Awesome, though. Air horn. That's a great choice. Man, I love it when I'm listening to the sick pop song and all of a sudden, air horn, air horn, air horn. It really keeps the party going. We should hang out more. If you're anything like your air horn, I bet you'll never get an eye. Yeah, your air horn's funny. Which is a good thing. Two fun, one charm. Very good. Very good stats for her. And I don't think I've really screwed right. up anything with her except that one time. But it's still counted as an affection point. I don't know why. You take your seat, and if you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost more interested in their phones than they are of you. Mostly because Polly doesn't need to eat. Vera's probably just trying to check her bank account. And you don't know better. And you know that. Yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. Hey there. It's nothing personal, Lynn. It's just that Polly and I are having a very engrossed... Our very engrossed in texting our financials. Our financial slave. Yay! Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you everything you want. That's my fetish, too. But... Buying things for people, having people buy things for me, duh. I mean, not buying things for people, but having, yeah. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Oh, uh, so you got yourself a, a gold digging daddy, sugar daddy? Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if you run out of money? Our cash flow. Instantly stops. Besides being hemmed in everything you want on a platter, in this case, the platter being an uh, online money transferring platform, is almost boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much cocaine as I am right now, but I see that you, I see what you mean. Brand new shoes are okay. Alright, different necklace. Definitely does not look like a burrito. If we can somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get interesting. And we could continue to profit even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, 
mean, how interesting do you think business actually is? Since he's obsessed with us, we should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. fine at all, but my favorite currency is chaos. Hmm, seems like the ladies are in a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. Tell him to marry a llama. Yep, sounds about right. Oh my god, yes, that is everything to me. I actually had a dream just like that one time, except it wasn't a llama, it was an alpaca. I had a weird dream where I was in a arranged marriage to Jason Voorhees. Very weird indeed. I don't think I made it down the aisle. <laughs> Not because he killed me. He wasn't trying to. Because I kept running away. His mom was there. Mrs. Voorhees is creepy. And it wasn't a wedding. It was like a bar mitzvah. Other than that, it was exactly the same. Yeah, I don't think this is my scene. I'm gonna go check on my illegal you us later. I'm texting the financial slave right now, telling him to marry a llama. Ooh, he's already typing. Let's see. Lynn, you will never believe this. It turns out that the financial slave has actually been talking to a llama for a few months now through a llama monster dating site. He says he's a committophobe and never really defined the terms of the, his relationship with the llama, and he keeps introducing the llama as a friend knows now that it's because he's just scared of being hurt. He's taking this as a sure sign that it's time to be brave and commit to the llama. And they're headed to the city hall for the ceremony right now! Of course he says he'll have to take his leave for our group chat since his heart and wallet now belong to another, specifically a llama. Aww, isn't that the sweetest love story you've ever heard? I'm so glad we got to make this happen together. This is the sweetest love story you've ever heard of, or something. But hey, maybe you and Polly will end up having a love story of your own. Uh, she's gonna be a little sad that she doesn't get the mun muns now. Alright! Maybe she'll be sad about that. Don't know. Polly... Polly takes no shits. A day of recess, a day of rave. Da -da -da. You notice Polly staring at her phone with an uncharacteristic intensity. She usually looks much happier, snorting through dick, sorting through dick pics. Better investigate. Hey, boo! Oh, hey, boo! I'm just checking out information on possible afterlives. Like, I'm not gonna spend my time as a high school student for all eternity. Who does that? I've collected some pamphlets from various afterlives, and I'm looking into the pros and cons of each option. Oh. It's just such a big decision, you know? I mean, this could affect the rest of my afterlife. Do you know anyone who went any of these all afterlives? Like, which afterlife are you into? Uh, no, I think it's this one. Damn it. Nothingness? <sighs> That's so lame. You know what there is to do in nothingness? Nothing. Yes. Do you know how fun my afterlife is? So fun. I don't want to just repeat high school forever and ever and ever. Who does that? Just because I don't want to stay a high schooler doesn't mean I want to give up all the cool stuff I've got going on in this existence. Damn it, I didn't think the kids was like... I, I thought like... I don't know. <laughs> no more fun party drugs would make me feel super hyper. Hi! No more fun party drugs that make you feel totally mellow. No more dick pics? Bro, what kind of world would that be? You have no zest for life or afterlife, as the case may be, doesn't mean I'll give up the good shit. I'm gonna go consider literally every single possible afterlife there ever has ever been, and we'll expect for one yeah, except for the one you just suggested. But definitely write to me as once you get there. I tried. Although you and probably, <laughs> although you probably won't be able to because you know nothing is. Oh man, managed to bore Polly. Shit. My stats! My stats took a hit, bros. Ah! My stats. Alright! Gotta fix that. Let's go party again! 
Dear God! What do you think you're doing, cat? This cat is always here. You see Polly looking usually depressed. Shit, was it the things? She usually... Uh, she's usually on hella good drugs at this time of day, you ask me to. I'm gonna live forever! I was yelling that at a party last night, you know, because of the echo cocaine. I mean, echo cocaine. But then I realized it's like literally actually true. And forever is like a really, 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 really long time, you know? What if I run out of stuff to do? What if aliens take over and they ban partying? What if the earth blows up and I have to live in space with dumb, boring space animals? <sighs> I get bored when the bus takes an extra 10 minutes to arrive. I'm ever gonna stay hyper for eternity. I mean, hype. You don't have to. Whenever you get tired of existing, just go piss off a priest. Meth. Oh, come on! Why am I scoring out with her now? Just like regular meth? Not even double meth, or meth plus, or methapalooza featuring Kanye West? I actually would have laughed if they named it Cocaine West. I was bored on regular myth before Breaking Bad was out of its first season. I've been bored of all the advanced myths since that time I took a bunch of Bolivian Ultra Myth and then dug a tunnel to Australia. But yeah, whatever, regular myth is fine. Loser! Nerd. Damn it! Done by Polly's words, you decided to drive Bolivia Ultra Myth, you end up having to invent a time machine to correct that colossal mistake. This is not going well. All right. I really hope I still get enough favor with her. Rabbit, chosen table. Damien, dejecting, hefting a ball of mashed potatoes. Polly sad presses her hand through his head. Oh. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? I honestly have no idea. I've tried throwing potatoes at people and yelling food fight, but I think everyone's too scared of me to fight back. And I can't throw any food because of my stupid ghost hands. Wait. How she had been doing homework. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture, sure, but not food. Oh, I guess just in objects. There's gotta be a way to provoke food. My dads are always telling me to be more political. But then we're not political. Your strength is hitting things, and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Eh, it's true. Those curves, man. Thigh guy. Unbelievably hot. That's it. The cafeteria on fire! Wait, no, that's not a solution. That's just ours. But who is jump straight to ours? It's hard to watch them struggle with this, so I step in. Wars are fought. That's the Damien answer. Hey, Polly, you know what the Greeks fought over? Yeah. Hey, yeah! I was planning to do that later anyway. After I finished this court of ectoboos, Polly floats up onto the table and, in a practice motion, whips off her top. To the victor! This is a high school cafeteria. Polly's rash actions just upsets the boiling cauldron of hormones, set it on fire, and tap dances on the ruins. Soon the air is thick with sausage and gravy. Potato crisps fly, ev potato crisps fly everywhere with the flavored shrapnel. Uh, Polly puts her shirt back down, now that everyone's too busy fighting to remember what they're fighting about. Looks like mine really were the tits that launched a thousand chips. The view you just got makes that pun worth it. And that's a new one. That is a new pun I did not think was right. Congrats. Twenty fun! You're minding your own business. Uh, you see Liam and Polly in the midst of what seems to be a very intense conversation. And God knows you never mind your own business for too long. <laughs> Liam, I'm out of ideas! I think we've done everything already. There is no new and exciting things to do. Ah, uh, my dear Polina. Who would have said that afterlife is such an awful word? I think Arcade Fire said that already. But I'm not sure. Dang. No, Liam, don't give up. There's something super fun we haven't done yet. Like partying with a dead writer. Already done that in July of 1925. What 
we're going to have a ski adventure on Death Mountain. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, given the t-shirt to the hippo because Death Mountain is cold. Hippos don't have fur. Uh, uh, what about an orgy with our classmates as a bonding experience? Wait, what? Nah, I grew tired of orgies after the masquerades organizations by Lord Tully. Lord Tully in the Wasteland House. I'm not sure if that's a reference to Edgar Allan Poe's masquerade. Gate of the Red Death, or uh, Game of Thrones. Not entirely sure. But the orgy idea is an ending I can get, and I want to finish the series with that, because it involves everybody, including Robert. But I'm not sure now. Yeah, classic poly mistake, thinking orgies are always the answer. What about adopting a baby and raising it, and loving it, and respecting being responsible until it becomes the best lawyer in the country. No, 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 push rewind, go back to the orgy thing. The orgy thing was dope. You need to make them rethink the orgy thing. Why is this triggering now? We're near the end of this. What about an orgy, but afterwards, an intense chest, test, yeah, intense chess tournament. Chess tournaments are orgy. Maybe? I don't have the smarts for, like, test chest tournament. Start chanting orgy, 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 orgy! There is not much more to it. I think Lynn has a point. I just missed the orgy idea completely. But it took me hearing it five times in a very loud voice to see the whole new life. Yes! I love anything where it's proposed in a loud, annoying tone. So, orgy it is. Anyway, there's just three of us. Orgy with three of us is just awesome. I mean, it's just three of But it's time to convince some people to join Polly in Gleam's good old fashioned RT. That name is a bit derivative, but Polly is right. I'll start the preparations. You two go hunt down some orgy attendees, or um, I'm sure lots of absurd and funny situations will take place. Fuck yeah! Orgy planners unite! There you go. When last week the school's career advisor suggested that career in orgy planning, we thought she was just super drunk again. Yeah, in order to do the orgy thing and get it started early on, I have to do things that All right. uh, get Polly and Liam like, super dope and happy about me. But, yeah. Different thing right now. This is just all paw paw. Well, that orgy ain't gonna plan itself. Okay, it's just gonna continue on. But, can't go speak of the orgy. Well, that or yeah. You spot Damien and Scott, so you go for it. Hi! Hey, sweethearts! Lynn and I, the lovable fan favorite Polly, are recur recruiting people for a very special event. Oh, are we doing a uh, purge night? I love purge nights. No, Damien, I know this trick. They tell us you're going to do a very special event, and then it's the event. Oh, fuck it. Are you bringing this event? Not cool, bro. No, 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 stop it. It's an orgy. We're looking for people for an orgy. Give me five minutes, and I'll convince you why you should come. We're in. What? It's an orgy. We're high schoolers in our 20 somethings. No more explanation needed. Yeah, I love being in the nude. Wait, a lot of our classmates will be there, right, Scott? There'll be tons of social pressure at the event like that. Shit. And social pressure is a bad thing, right? Yeah, it's the worst thing for us. Oh no! Even worse than the event? I don't want to miss an orgy, but uh, we have to find a way to be the coolest dudes at the orgy. It's thinking time. You don't have high school. You don't have high school hopes of them coming with bright, bright ideas so it doesn't involve setting an orange on fire. You need to give them a better alternative. You can study this book. Uh... No. More fancy hats? Maybe? I don't... I don't know. Oh, that worked. Hmm. It's true that fancy people do wear fancy hats. And fancy people are cool, uh, Damien. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I can wear one of those hats with a feather on it. I can wear a top hat. 
you can see it now. Scott! Hey, what a nice orgy! Wait, who are these two fancy gentlemen? Could that be Damien and Scott? I can barely recognize them under all the fanciness and under those hats. That's a very nice thing to say about it, Damien. It is indeed, Scott. We're just two fancy hats away from it. Hooray! Let's find some fancy hats! Well, that was stupid, as it was effective, boo. I take my fancy hat off to you. Fancy hats are always the answer. At least they were in this situation. Hello, kitty. All right. She woke up. All right. Time to get some extra Credwood Paw Paw. You arrive at the table to find the coven eating, Polly and Miranda screaming. We're under attack! Alarm, alarm, summon the guards! They're using their bizarro mind powers on me. The cute tall one is my less attractive evil twin. She uses her shade. Uh, she uses shades just like me. Clearly because of the evil twin thing. We're not attacking anyone. We're eating. What do you mean less attractive? Uh, disgraceful. Lies. Subterfuge. Ah, uh, I can tell them. In, I can feel them in my brain, making me less cool and sexy. Always, Always the, the same, same with you. you. Every single lunch hour. You can't follow your friends. Uh, allow your friends to be attacked. Quick, save them with a fiendish menace. Just joust them for Miranda's item. Drug their food. You reach into the pouch of drugs and pull out a handful of miscellaneous pills, which you sprinkle onto the coven's mashed potatoes. What are you doing? Are you trying to drug us? Idiot, winners don't do drugs. We're out. You know what? How about we just move to another table? Cool! Haha, <laughs> suckers! They left their drug mashed potatoes. Looks like everything's turning up Polly. Polly eats the drugs out of the potatoes and then decides she's a... Uh, she's a canoe? A canoe that thinks you're kind of cute? Okay. Weird. Very weird. But it's working. Alright! Damien were quite easy to convince. Oh my god, it's going through the whole thing. Shit. Perfect! It's Miranda! No order is complete without some royalty at all. Greetings, fellow classmates! Oh, hello, fellow classmates! Yeah, it's not gonna be the full thing because we have to invite Vera. So, we're spared the orgy ending for now. Miri, stop being a weirdo. Don't call me that. Also, come to our orgy. Wait. Quite the strategy here. An orgy? What a delightful evening plan! Really? I mean, cool! Yeah, orgies are an invention of us aristocrats to celebrate their mystery religion only for in uh, ah, initiates who were from a high school upbringing. Exquisite celebration of the higher classes and its power. Still a mer, a mere mer princess. My parents are quite wishy about my need to find the right suitor. They want me to stick to my royal responsibilities and stop with all the absurd shenanigans that to define spooky high school. So I'm not sure if they will approve an orgy. It doesn't seem like something a parent would be okay with, right? Quite probably. A challenging quandary stands before us. How should I keep it? I always feel like you, you've seen everything at the school, yet every day you're surprised by a new, unexpected problem. What should you do? Your parents want you to choose a suitor, but an orgy is a way of genuine suitor's prowess. Invite them to it. Your parents never trust children. Put them at ease by letting them come to the orgy as chaperone. enjoy a good planned orgy, I can't risk sharing such an elevated event with suitors before knowing if they are worthy. What if they don't know proper orgy etiquette? What if they speak 
guest in five languages. What if they're filthy air people in disguise? I'm not ready to trust them, even if the most trustworthy ones like Damien War- I mean, uh, Dana Waldorf and Sir uh, Ricard totally not air people to- <laughs> Well, Miri, I feel you. Maybe I should be a good friend and fuck all the rich people for you, just to be sure. I would be your suitor tester. I mean, taster. What a wonderful idea! Would you do that for me? I will fuck every royal dick and pussy you sent my way, just because I'm an awesome friend. I read that out loud. It's recorded for all prosperity. Marvelous! Please rate them on attractiveness and manners, ability to do meaningless and pompous small talk, and how likely they are to be air people in disguise. What about if I just tell you how good they are at oral sex? Close enough! I guess I have to cancel that orgy until I fuck all those suitors, huh? What a shame. Yes, but it's just for the greater good. My happiness. Ta-da! And so they both leave. You learn not to be so greedy when inviting people to an orgy. How was I being greedy? Alright. Time to see if I gain the Paul Paul. It's Polly time! Alright! You finally pick up your Pick up. Pl you finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to Monster Prom with you. Yes! Yes! It'll be epic, bro. Shit. We'll get pretty, pretty wild, too. Only one thing. If I were you, I'd get some good life insurance. <laughs> Just in case. I tend to fuck people to death. Let's party till dawn, it's honey! good old... Something. C cupcakes. To make sure that the, the date would be as crazy as possible. Then you spent all night dancing at prom. Or that's what you thought you did. In reality, you were in the middle of the desert dancing with three wizard hobos, a guy in a stuffed animal costume, and the incarnation of an ancient god. Still, best night ever. Yay! Most likely to survive a year drinking only some pee. These corporeal students. Yeah, that sounds about right. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happens, and it was wonderful. Polly took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. She spent most of the time partying since there was almost no work because, you know, it was summer. Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. Just kidding. He became an athlete, duh. He's still a bit of a simpleton, but a lovable and good-hearted one as ever. Vera realized she was a character in a video game, which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power because she's not part of the game. She plays the game. So, be careful. Maybe she's the one pulling your strings. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in the war called Youth. Once again, we were young, unafraid, we were ready to start. Party song! What if I told you that
No better distraction. Yay! I unlocked in more images! Well, that takes care of this episode of Monster Prom. In the next one, we'll be going for Vera. And then the Mer bitch. Because I can't really stand her. I just can't. Reminds me too much of Princess Peach. Probably why they make her wear Daisy's dress in the when you're trying to get the Christmas skills. I mean creativity skills. Either way, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, favorite, share, comment, subscribe, do all that funny jazz in case you wanna make you feel uh, in case it makes you feel good. Because I'm not forcing you to do anything. Why would I? I'm just a voice on the internet. Randomness! But I hope you're having a good day or night depending when you see this video though. And as always, my wonderful lovelies, stay awesome. Stay beautiful, and I will see you all in the next video. Till next time, bye bye!